So we're here to solve this isodoku by Sircon called the Pamakali Travertines. It's always helpful to know the inspiration for a puzzle, and if you're not familiar with this one, it may be worth the Google, that this is a uh, calcium uh, sort of overflow from active lava activity in, in an area of Turkey called Pamakale, uh, which leads to this really interesting set of terraces, sort of overflows of this white calcium rock, but also then water pools, hot baths, and other things around it. And as you can see in kind of the, the jagged but terraced sort of look of this uh, symmetric surface, it's not too uh, unrepresentative of what was seen in that natural formation. It's certainly not your standard isodoku, but is an interesting pattern to look through. And before we get started, I want to do two things. The first is I want to turn on for myself uh, in the solving mode both the normal numbers, which is how I'll put in solutions, but I'm going to turn on my tab to our helper medium so I can put in some notations that are smaller in cells because of the way the cells bend here. Some of the standard addition of candidates isn't as easy to do in this uh, grid style. So that's setting me up to at least be ready for the tools for the solve. The second thing is to really look at the puzzle regions and get a feel for how to look through a, this kind of isodoku. In any isodoku, if you just jump to like choose two digits and look at them, you may not recognize that they really don't. Like these threes, like, oh, they're close together. They may see a lot of the same things, but actually the three see very few of the cells, like in this column or in many of these columns together. And so there's not a quick thing to do with the three, except maybe to say like one of those two cells, if we actually sketch out, like these, these are seen by this three and that is seen by that three, but that's the most the threes interact and the sixes are even worse. The sixes, I think, give you like this cell, one of these three cells is a six, so you can actually take that out of the grid. Instead of just sort of randomly looking at numbers, it's helpful to look at the regions and then see their shapes and recognize that, you know, a region like this one, which just has many bends to it, actually is stretching across a lot of different rows, as we'll call them in this grid, like horizontal, vertical, diagonal, however you want to view it, like, you know, this space sees two cells in this row from that region, this space sees two cells in the row from the region. The far more interesting connections are places like this, where in this row, four of the cells are in one region, four in the other region. So there's going to be a way that um, there's a lot of interaction that any of the digits over on the left are going to be forced into like these four cells that remain. But this region also has a case where there's another bend, which has one, two, three, four in the same space. And so these digits at the top, like this five and eight, have to go in the remaining cells. These four cells are left over in the grid, but because we actually got these givens at the bottom, the five and eight can only go on the two cells that are left over, and symmetrically the four and five on the left can only go on to these two potential cells, in part because this one and six has to be in the cells that remain and are outside of the space. So one and six are kind of up here, and three and seven are kind of up here, and you're probably saying, well, why am I writing all these complex nodes? Can I actually write sure digits? And for all these, I actually can. Like the six is in a region that would eliminate the six, so one is below, six is above, seven is here and three is here. Those are pretty clear. This four does see to the left and cancel this position. So this five at the start, giving this four at the start, this five coming back to the right, putting this eight, putting those five. This is a very effective way to start the puzzle, fully symmetric from the logic and from the way the givens were added. And so pretty elegant beginning. This bottom row now has two things to place in it, a two and an eight. And the eight is cleared out for two different reasons from the cell. So that cell is a two, this is an eight. We have uh, some more to place coming up this uh, column, two, three, and seven to go, and the three, seven goes in here. And <clears throat> the remaining digits actually in this whole space are one and six, so one, three, six, seven are what's in the row, and this one, six will eliminate uh, two of those options to put a, a three, seven over here. You could actually get that this cell has to be a one, six, and independently the three, seven eliminate cells here, and so this is also one, six. We got a naked pair at the start on the left and on the right side of the grid. So these are all things we can do as we begin the puzzle. We're now at a stage where we're going to want to start to explore some elements of the geometry and also some elements of the repeated digits. So let's start with some of the repeated digits. Some of them we have in three times in the grid, so it may be useful to look through some of them. I'm just trying to see some that look more promising. This four and this four look very promising in part because they eliminate four of the cells in this region. The rest are filled in, except for these two. These cells aren't seen by either of those digits, but they give us a notation, which will help us cancel. Um, if we come further to the right, all the way over to here, these two cells are not a four. So we're gonna look at the rest of this region for fours, and this four comes down and sweeps one, two, three cells out, and that leaves just this cell for a four. This being a last cell for a four in that region and placed up, it comes up at the top and actually interacts with this note and the four has to go to the left. 
It's got the five fours in the grid, so the sixth one will be for free, and this is the only cell I can go into in this region, which isn't in this row with anything, and isn't in this column, or however you want to call it. I guess they're all rows uh, in some uh, view of the world. Um, putting in a digit in the cell now actually makes this region fairly constrained, and so like this column is a key one to look at, and the digit I see in that column that's not already used is a five, so I can get a note for a five up here. One of these two cells, I don't have a five down below that's going to see that yet, but the five comes to the left, it eliminates this cell. This five eliminates these cells, and so there's a five here. I have the last region to consider is this one in the center, and so where these cells are eliminated from the five to the left, and these cells are eliminated from the five sort of up and to the left, that leaves a five in uh, one of these two cells. And noticing this five and this five are both sharing um, effectively, you know, these columns like this, this coming down and this coming down, see the other cell. What that should suggest is this cell is going to see a five from up above. A different way to think through this is in this column, the five that's already in this region eliminates these cells. This can't be a five, can't be a five. This is the only cell left that can be a five in this space. So we get that digit put in and uh, have the rest of the numbers sort of usefully already in the grid. Um, there is still a little more to do, probably by looking at repeated digits, um, nothing that's immediately jumping out, but now I'm starting to fill in more of, say, this column. I'm interested by sort of what is left over in the space. One thing I see for sure is where a 3 is already, like, in that region, not in these cells. A 3 is uh, somewhere here, but at also in the converse, where this 1 is already in this region, a 1 has to be in one of these two cells, or it's not anywhere in this column, and this symmetric 7 has the same reason that 7 has to be in one of those two cells, or it's not anywhere in this effective column I'm tracing my mouse. And so one of the things that's then left to think about is where does the two go in this box? Because we could place the two, we could probably force a lot of the rest. And there's now a new geometric situation that's playing out at this stage in the puzzle, which is this is a really key cell. It sees all the cells down below in this region, and it also sees all the cells to the right in this region. So all the digits that aren't yet placed in this region see this cell. And notice the 2 is not yet in that region. So if a big 2 were here, there's no place to put a 2 in this region at all. And with that cancellation, we see that the only cells a 2 can go in are uh, sh shared with this 1, 2 group, which will mean that the 7 comes down here. This is a hard deduction, but uh, a, an important deduction. It means that the 3, 7 is what fills out this column down below. We've got two cells left that are 2 and 8 to fill out this region, but this 2 sees this cell. So this is an 8, and this is a 2. That now means in this overall column, 5 and 3 are the two digits left to place, and the only one for a 3 is this top one because uh, it's eliminated there. So this is 5, this is 3. <coughs> this 5 uh, pushes a 5 over to the right, and now this column is left with 1 and 8 to place, and uh, this cell sees an 8 to the left, so the 1 is up above, 8 is here. Putting this 1 now sees this cell, which goes to a 6, goes to a 1, goes to a 6. We're just playing ping pong in the digits. We've got a 2 and 8 to place. The 8's already in the grid, so this is a 2, this is an 8. This 2 comes up and forces a 1 and a 2. In this space down here, we've got 1 and 7 and 6 left to go. The 1 sees both of these cells, so this is a 1. Uh, these cells are going to be 7 and 6, but the 6 is over to the right, so this is a 7 up top, a 6 down below. The 7 comes all the way to the cell, which is a 3. Um, last one to place, puts in a 7, puts in a 3, puts in a 7, and the last digit is a 2. We'll finish this grid. So really great puzzle inspired by uh, a, a familiar Turkish landmark and uh, really like dissecting the geometry of the grid and then thinking carefully about cells as you went through was the path to a solution here. So for those less familiar with this geometric style, probably a pretty hard lift. For those who solved a lot of the isotope puzzles we published elsewhere, this may have been an easier lift, but hopefully still an enjoyable Thursday puzzle regardless. Hope you learned something about solving isodoku, and we'll see you again soon.